Droners, welcome to another edition of Droner. And this one was inspired by you because a lot of you guys have been asking about editing and editing drone footage. And I actually even wrote in the comments a little bit, I was a little bit hesitant to do it for a couple different reasons, but we're gonna get started on this because, well, this is what we do. So first of all, what we're gonna be talking about today is picture profile settings. The reason we're talking about that is because that is actually the first step of editing, is making sure that your drone picture profile settings are what you want them to be so you can actually make the footage match to or be what you want it to be later on. Now, there's four different profiles that we're going to be talking about today. And the one that I most commonly shoot in is called D-Log, which shoots everything really flat. We'll get back to why we do that. But there's also d like there's also True Color, and Normal. Now, back to D-Log. D-Log is the, the, D-Log is the version where you pretty much shoot like this where everything is super flat and boring looking. And in the camera, you're gonna be like, why would I ever shoot this gray, dead looking mess? Well, the reason is, is because this gives you more dynamic range, AKA dynamic range being that you have more information available in your darks and in your lights, um, that it makes it so that you can match your footage to another camera, which normally our clients are trying to do, or be able to get the footage to just look more like you want it to. So when you set, a, uh, when you set the profile, it's really determining what kind of information you're gathering and the quantity of information that you're gathering. And D-Log gathers the most in the highs and the lows, but it looks weird when you're shooting it. So if you're the kind of person that just literally just takes the footage right off the drone and doesn't do any kind of color work or anything to it, just puts it on the internet, this ain't your cup, this is not your profile. So the second picture profile that I work in is D-Cine-like. Now D-Cine-like, obviously if you look at the difference between the two, you'll notice that the colors look a lot more like normal color mode. Um, and the reason that I ever would fly D-Cine-like is for a client that I don't really believe knows what they're doing in post and they're like, yeah, we're gonna color it and do all that kind of stuff, but it's like they're shooting the rest of it on like a GoPro or it just doesn't, you just don't trust that they know how to color something correctly and you're giving them something that could still be used directly as the color it is and could just be lightly adjusted and get it to where they want to get versus doing an entire color overgrade color grade to the piece. So this one is for like my intermediate clients where it's just like, I don't know if you know what you're doing, so I'm gonna give you the information to be able to play with it, but if you just use it as is, it'll probably be okay. So basically, if they don't ask me to shoot it super flat, then pretty much this is what I'm using. Next up, we have normal mode. Normal mode is just straight up the DJI standard color profile that mo makes the camera look like a DJI camera. Um, it's just regular colors. It looks a lot like what it looks like it's pretty much the auto mode um standardized like this is what you if you don't pretty much the normal mode is if you don't want to do anything in post-production with your footage if you don't want to do anything with it you just want to shoot it and use it as is this is what you do you go with normal just keep it on this it will look great it just won't match with other cameras all that well and you won't be able to play with the colors as much as you otherwise would in the d modes so this one just for you guys who are just like i just want to use the footage so the normal flight the normal color the normal picture profile mode is really good for being able to be in open areas that have even lighting across it for the most part. What we're flying today down the street is probably not gonna be the best. And the reason is, as you can see, is because there's a lot of highs and lows when it comes to the light. There's like a lot of sun coming through, there's a lot of shadows, there's a lot of different colors. So it makes it more difficult for a single color profile to be able to match all of that that's going on and make it look uniformly good. But at the same time, it doesn't look bad. And again, if this is, you know, if you don't know what you're doing in post-production all that well, especially when it comes to color work, then this is still what I would recommend, unless you have a friend, then I would say maybe d like to be able to just play with the highs and lows and be able to make it so it's more even across the board. So those are the three flight modes that I fly with the most. Those actually, by the most, I mean, those are literally the only three flight modes that I ever fly in. Um, but there's one more that we're going to test today, and that is True Color. I'm just curious about it because it's called True Color. Now, after those four color profiles, there's a bunch of other color profiles. And if you've ever been on Instagram, or you've ever been on Facebook, or you've ever been in any photo editing software, then this is pretty much all of those. Like, oh, the old time, and the black and white, and the inkwell, and all this other kind of stuff. Those are all the different color profiles that I recommend not using. The reason I recommend not using them, unless you're just completely goofing off and having fun, is because you can do most of that in post. And you'd rather have the option to be able to put a color profile on it in post than not have that. If you put it in old-timey style shooting, and then you want to actually make it look like it's normal, you really can't do that at that point. But if you have a regular one that you shot in D-Log, or something like, or just normal mode, and then you can put a western old filter on it, that will work, but you can't work it backwards. So these ones are the ones that's just like, oh look, you know, like these are all just kind of for fun just to have options. You know, like I said, if you were not going to do any form of editing and you're a hundred million percent sure this is exactly what you want, you're only going to use this footage for one specific reason or a picture or whatever, then sure, go ahead and play, have a, have a field day. But for me, I like to have options, I like to give my clients options, and these don't allow you really to do that. So I say stay away from them for the most part, but use them if you know what you're doing.
Cool, you get it? Makes sense? I hope so, because it kind of sort of made sense to me. Either way, I'm about to fly these routes in the different um, picture profile modes, and uh, we'll go inside and see what they look like. So when I fly these four routes, I'm going to keep all of the camera settings as close as possible. So the only exception to these camera settings is the D-Log setting. And for some reason, when you put into D-Log, it gets locked at 500 ISO. Now, the only reason I can think that something like that would happen is that typically on cameras, when you go into the log settings, it just reverts the ISO to the native ISO. But the, IS, the native ISO for a Phantom 4 Pro is 100 to 200 ISO. So why it goes to 500 is an incredibly nerdy question, and you can see the fights and wars happening in the DJI forums all over the internet where people are trying to figure out why that is. I'm not an engineer. I'm not trying to figure that out. I know why I use that setting, and I'm just going to get all the rest of the settings to be as close to that as possible so that we can have a standardized test. So what I'm doing is flying all the rest of them in 400 ISO with a 16 ND PL or polar, uh, PL or polar pro filter because those filters are the best and uh, yeah the shutter will be at 50. All right, joiners, so we've gone and shot it, and now we brought it into uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, that's what we use to edit around these parts. And now we're going to look and see the difference. Now, one of the first things that we noticed is Tony, cameraman Tony and I uh, were, were playing with this, is that this really is a subjective thing. Um, when we, like we were talking about before with D-Log, we know that clients have more space to do more with. And we played with D-Log more because that's what we're used to doing. Um, but you'll see, you know, it's really up to taste. You know, some of them are a little bit different than the others. First one we're going to look at is going to just be the straight normal. What it just looks like with the normal, like I talked about before. So, as you can see, it looks pretty good. It looks like a drone shot, just going down the street. Um, it's hard to notice anything um, extra special about it until you see another one of these. Um, but I notice when I'm looking at this is, especially in the beginning of the shot right here, you'll notice that the front of that truck and the highlights and the lowlights, like that tree right there on the left, is a little dark. Um, and the brights are pretty bright, like those driveways, pretty bright. But we'll see how that compares to everything else. So, next up, we have true color, same shot. Start it right there. Now this one, to me, looks the worst out of the four. Um, as you can see, like the darks are really dark. Um, like it's, you can't really see like the front of that truck, uh, van thing. You don't even see any anything, um, really. You can't see the grill, but the highlights don't look all that bad. Um, it doesn't look horrible, but to me, out of the four, this is the worst look. It just doesn't look that good, and I think you probably are going to have less information to play around with when you're playing with the highlights and the shadows. So this one to me is the one that I've actually never used and probably never will. All right, coming up next we have the Cine like, which I really like. Um, here it is. As you can tell, it's flatter. Um, and by flatter, I mean that the colors are not as vibrant as they were in the first two, as well as the, the highlights and the shadows are not as pronounced. So in the shadows, you can see a lot more, and the highlights don't seem as bright. Whereas like you look at this driveway with this, uh, with the, um, I'm going to pause it right there. So you see this driveway right here on the left behind this tree with the brick wall behind it. It doesn't look like it's overexposed or that it's blown out like it did before on the true color or even on the normal. It just looks like a driveway. But at the same time, there's almost like a gray over, overlay of everything. So like I was just to do a quick look, like bam, driveway from this one, right there, same shot, driveway from normal to Cine like you can almost see like a gray coating on it. You see the gray coating, especially on the right side of the screen? It's like a gray coating, but that's where you have uh, the ability to play with the colors. So next up, we're gonna look at the D-Log. Now this is like I was talking about before. When you're in camera and you're actually shooting drone with D-Log, it's, it's, it hurts your soul a little bit, especially when a client's like, let me review the footage and it looks like this. You're like, well, you know, it's, I'm shooting it flat so you can play with it later because the colors and everything just isn't there. Um, it really isn't because it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to look like this and it's supposed to look kind of like crap. Um, but you know, like you can say, you can see that the, the, in the shadows you can see stuff in the highlights, there's no overexposure. Everything is just right in the middle. It's the safe way to go. Um, so there's that. But we actually took one of the Polar Pro um, LUTs and um, we actually used it. So we used that on the D-Log, which is right here. 
Yeah, so it's not even rendered. The rendering has been taking forever, so I'm not gonna try to play it. But you can see the difference here. You can see that you definitely know these are shadows. You definitely know these are highlights. The grass looks greener. I think the sky looks like a pretty blue. It's really nice. Um, and you just have the ability to play more. So for me, I pretty much fly every single time in Descendy Log or, I mean, yeah, Descendy Like or D Log. Those are the ones I go for just because, as you can see, as I click through these, I think it's the best color. You see, look, look how much vibe, like, so this is normal, and then this is the D Log. All right, so some of you might ask, okay, wow, my Mavic actually has the um, D-Log and D-Cine-like um, preferences. You can do that. You can set those picture profile settings in that. Well, should I do that too? And my answer is actually no. And the reason is because the Mavic doesn't write as much information as the Phantom 4 Pro. It does not give you the space to be able to play with it. Pretty much the image falls apart as soon as you start really pulling in any real direction. With the Mavic, what I recommend is you just stay with decent -y like um, That's just, honestly, we played around with it, we stressed it around. That is the best setting for getting footage that's pretty good. Droners, thank you for checking out this edition of, well, just Droner. And if you want to see more of that, you can click here because that's what we do when we like this. Or you can click here because this is a great opening video for a drone channel. Yeah, we do that. As always, I really appreciate your guys' support. And you can do it in a couple different ways. One of them, you can be as fly as me with this t-shirt that is now new and matches the color of the website. So check it out at the link below. Or you can do the other link below, which is our Patreon page, which is like the biggest way to support us because that's just what allows us to literally do this. Um, and at the very least, man, just make sure you subscribe because that's what homies do and it takes nothing from you. And as always, make sure you stay fly.